another collection, Connection, from Carmarthur Castle Museum and Art Gallery. My name is Christopher Parry and I work at Carmarthur Castle. And this is another in our series of videos where we look at objects from our collection and we explore the connections between local history, the building and the objects themselves. In front of me are three very special objects and what you are looking at here are the first examples of automated ballot boxes that were created by a Merthyr-born man back in 1869. They were invented by a gentleman called William Gould, who was born in Vena in 1810. And at a young age, he served as a servant boy for the Crochet family. Some say at Arthur Castle, but there's some debate there might be another Crochet home. But either way, he's got quite a unique upbringing because he not only worked amongst the Crochet family as a servant, he also worked underneath them at Kabatha Ironworks as an iron worker. He worked for many years in the ironworks until he rose his way up to become a puddler, one of the highest skilled jobs and one of the best paid jobs in the ironworks. And unlike many of his fellow workers and other people in the town, he didn't fritter his money away. He was very sensible in saving this money and literally taking advantage of the high wages he was getting and putting them to one side, being thrifty. What he did with that money then is eventually he invested and became an independent business owner. He became a grocer on Brecon Road. The grocery shop that he ran is still standing, 90 Brecon Road, and he operated as a grocer there for many years up until his death in 1875. One of the most important things about William Gould is his awareness politically. He was one of the central figures in the Chartist movement for Merthyr. Now if you're unfamiliar with what Chartism is, Chartism is basically a name given to a group of people that follow the six points of the Charter. Now essentially what this Charter drew is six points of reform of change. The key one for us is a secret ballot, or the ballot as they called it. Now Chartists were really adamant that they wanted secrecy in the ballot. They believed in voting systems that were working and could work, but obviously there was a lot of intimidation tactics going on in different voting areas around Britain. So for instance, if you were voting and you were voting against, say, your boss or your employer in some way, or you were voting against the, who they were supporting, then they would know and they could intimidate you. They know who you were voting, it wasn't a secret. So having a vote, having secrecy, having anonymity was really important because it leveled the playing field. And so we'll have a little bit of a closer look at these now and explain a little bit more about them. William Gould, while working in Kavartha, earned himself a name to fighting for the people of Kavartha and fighting for workers' rights. No one could underestimate or undersell his passion for having equality in society. In 1857, for example, he was publicly debating with Henry Austin Bruce, a local political leader. In that debate, he was reiterating the importance of giving the vote for every man aged 21 who hasn't got a criminal record, mind you. The vote, but equally important, he said, is giving him the means to exercise it freely. And what that is, is if he does vote, and he votes in a way that is not liked locally or by his employer or anything, then it was taken out on him. It, it was a fact of life that you weren't voted in secret, so you were afraid to vote against the grain in case it comes back on him. So the secret ballot boxes and the ideas were forming in William Gould's mind for many, many years. He had a keen interest in science and carpentry and everything. And when he did become a self-employed grocer on Bracken Road, he obviously started focusing more on the means to achieve the secret ballot. This one here being pretty much the earliest version that we've got. We've actually got four ballot boxes, but one of them is on loan to the Manchester Workers' Museum on long-term loan. Such is the importance of these objects, really. You can see that the dial on the front for a start is drawn up, and you can see William Gould's name, Merthyr, there. The first thing I'll tell you is these ballot boxes weren't known as the automated ballot boxes or the secret automated ballot box. They had one name and one name only, and that was the Merthyr ballot box. He was keen to have Merthyr's name on this invention. Not his, but Merthyr's. On the top of the object, you can see a slot. Now, in that slot was placed the voting slips. Now, you would think, well, that's still not that secret, but you see these clips here, and it's the same then on the other side here. 
These are the indications of the extra bit of the invention that we don't currently have. There would be a curtain attached to the ballot box, raised up, and so you would come along, fill out your ballot in private, in person, behind the curtain, and then insert it. And then there, your anonymity stays. Now, no one knows exactly when he started inventing this object, and some reports say it was first used in April in the national schoolrooms in 1870 in Luther. But in fact, it was used earlier in places like Abrahaman and other places, and it was submitted to lots of different committees around Britain for scrutiny, because he wanted this to be the official ballot box for all of Britain. This first version was probably around 1869. And it was from there on in that William Gould was known as the inventor of the Merthyr ballot box. But let's have a look at the other two boxes we have in the collection as well. So as you can see, these are slightly more advanced versions than the other prototype we were looking at just now. These have got the actual dial mechanism on them. They've still got on the top the inserts for the voting slips and cards on both of them. But they are missing the attachments for the curtain. So whether that became a separate thing or not is kind of unknown at the moment. But either way, the curtain still would have been attached on some level to it. How the dials worked is every slip you put into the top, the outer dial would click in, and that would click all the way up to 200. And then once it reached 200, the centre dial would click in to actually make sure that that's one 200 counted. And then so you would add up how many you've got by the end. And these are examples of a Mirtha born boy who saw a problem and fought very hard and didn't just say that he wanted a secret ballot, he gave people the means to do a secret ballot. And so for us now, it seems weird to think of the secret ballot being a massive issue, but it really was. And it's also weird to get into the mindset of people who were against it. But for example, if you look at the 1868 elections in Mirtha, there were several people up for election and two of them going head to head was Mr. Fothergill, Mr. Richard Fothergill, and Henry Austin Bruce. Now Fothergill was supportive of the secret ballot of trying to get that into law. Bruce was liked by local chartists and local people, but he didn't support this secret ballot. And so one day William Gould had a conversation with him and he said to him, I go upon my knees and beg to you that you will give way, support the ballot, let us be able to say that you are on our side and we will in fact secure your election. But Mr. Bruce had his own response. The ballot he considered was a scream for the coward. For what is more, it is the temptation for men to profess one thing and do another. A man promises his vote to a candidate and then at the election votes another way. However you look at it, the secret ballot was taken up and made law by 1872. Such was the power of people behind it. Now I can't really oversell the importance of these objects. These are fine examples of how a person in Merthyr was fighting for political rights, not just for themselves, but for others, but then also going one step further and giving the country the means to achieve those political rights. Just a few words from his obituary, I think, kind of sums up the importance of William to the local population. We must forget his crotches, his self-will and ruggedness in consideration of his virtues, his tenderness for the poor, his contempt for shams and hypocrisies, and his detestation for rank and wealth, except when allied with goodness. And regard him with special respect as having shown that the peddler can sit in the council with the elect of the town. And a servant boy, if he wills, be on par with the best and wealthiest in all the district. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking at some of these objects and finding out more about William Gould. And certainly if you want to see these objects, come along to the Bath Castle Museum and Art Gallery to see them in person. Thank you very much for listening. Au revoir.